I'm Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief of ArtMiniEurope.com. A central theme this week at ECR is youth, and trainees are here in force at, in Vienna, and I'm very pleased to have someone who's come up through the ranks and, and um, still definitely qualifies as a young person, Dr. Oshi from Cambridge. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Oshi. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Good. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself and about how you got into radiology? A few years ago, I was an intern in the emergency room at Adam Brooks Hospital, and I really didn't know what to choose for residency. And this was a time when Professor Adrian Dixon was head of radiology, and he very kindly arranged for me to spend half a day at the radiology department. And under the tutelage of Adrian Dixon and Lowell Berman, I fell in love with the radiology pretty quickly. And the story continues. <laughs> okay, good. Now, you also benefited very much from ESOR, the European School of Radiology. What did they give you in, in, in part, as part of your training? What did you get from them? The, I, I received so much from the School of Radiology. In 2013, when I was a final year resident, I had the opportunity to go to Vienna on a European scholarship. The following year, I was given a fellowship to go to Memorial School. Sloan Kettering Hospital. These are incredible opportunities that a trainee can only dream of. Uh, in Vienna, my tutor, Professor Katia Pinker, really looked after me like one of her own. She took me everywhere, and I mean everywhere, to every congress that was held in Europe at the time, at her own expense. The scholarship covers your travel to Vienna, but these were extra miles that the Viennese team offered to me. And at that time, I met the team from Sloan Kettering who were visiting, and conversations began my enthusiasm and curiosity got the better of me. And um, before I knew what, they were talking about, well, how could they create an opportunity for me to go to America? And then following year, uh, it was a dream come true then to receive the ESOL fellowship to study. And at Sloan Kettering, Professor Risa had an open house. She let me go to every single training program that was available. And it was a real insight into the emerging world of imaging pictures as data about precision medicine and a chance to really learn about the genome and the way in which precision medicine is evolving. Excellent. How long did you spend in New York? Six that's, months. Oh, that's tremendous. And this all stemmed from ESOR. This but if all you, stemmed if you, from ESOR. If you hadn't been at that, that session back in 2013, you wouldn't have actually spent those six months in New York. No. Did it, did it cost you anything in terms of... And I mean, obviously, it's a huge investment of your time, but what did you pay in terms of going to the ESOR program and getting involved in that you do uh, you do you do need you do end up supplementing the scholarship and the fellowship funds that you get but what you get in return it just completely outweighs anything that you may you may have to put in I would hardly call it any kind of sacrifice I'd call it a complete gain uh, you get to meet with people who are pioneers in the field the program chooses mentors like Elizabeth Morrison breast imaging at Sloan Kettering Thomas Helbig uh, in Vienna Pascal Balzer uh, Katia, who was my tutor, and also Professor Harold in Vienna. And the way these trainers are of a, of a, I would say, a set breed, they really help you to expand your horizons and reach for things that you never knew existed. Excellent. That's really good. Now, when you returned from, from New York to Cambridge, you started your PhD mm -hmm. at the Adam Brooks in Cambridge. Have you been able to apply that knowledge that you picked up? It was, yeah. it was vital. It was vital. So in, in Cambridge, at the University of Cambridge, I am translating a new technology, which is optical imaging, from mouse to human in breast cancer, and to apply the technology in a way that it helps us to make decisions in the future. All that training I had in Vienna and New York was a huge part of it. Uh, it's where I even learned that this kind of uh, imaging existed. So Good. definitely. Now, when you went to New York, that must did they provide you with accommodation and they they grounded you at, in the area? Did they they help you to arrange yeah. everything. Okay. So uh, there is somebody called Sheila Fortunato in New York, and Katia played that role for me in Vienna. Uh, there's a whole pastoral role which they play because you don't know the city and they make sure you integrate in well. Okay. Now it's a big week for Cambridge. Professor Gilbert is um, is giving the honorary lecture this mm -hmm. week. Are you excited about this? Hugely excited and very proud of the home team. The flag is flying high, and there are several presentations, several moderators from Cambridge across the board. So there's a big presence here at the conference. Okay. 
Good. Excellent. Now, what's new at the Adambrooks? What should people look out for at, in terms of uh, what's... Is, is the hospital being developed greatly in terms of imaging and in terms of radiology? It is. Adambrooks is going through a very interesting phase uh, because it's part of the University of Cambridge. And there is a whole uh, infrastructure of industry that is coming around it. So we're having AstraZeneca move to our doorstep. And there is, in the next five years, going to be a, a cancer center. And imaging is going to be a big part of that center. Okay. So there's, there's, there's a lot to look out for. Watch Excellent. this space. Now, I, I, have to, I have to ask you about um, something very much on people's minds, Brexit and the British exit from the EU, the planned exit. Um, how, how would this affect you as a researcher? For research and education, it would be a tragedy. Um, being part of Europe has given trainees, both in the United Kingdom and in Europe, a chance. Uh, and I say this in the, almost in the context that I'm speaking through the voice of Brexit now, that I'm already saying United Kingdom and Europe. Um, but actually, we are a part of Europe as it stands. And because of that camaraderie, there was so much that we learned, so much that we shared. We hope that it won't have the impact and alienation in academia, because that would be a real loss for everybody. Okay. Well, best of luck with your studies. Mm -hmm. Hopefully everything works out fine. Um, this is Philip Ward signing off for uh, auntminieurope.com.